Current market conditions demand a cost response. And at group level, we have a moratorium on recruitment except for essential safety and line production related occupations. At Zonda Enda, we've delayed long dated surface infrastructure at three shaft. We've reduced a raised boring to one machine only, previously two. We've halted de uh, a development at, uh, below the 17 level tips. At Boisendal, the second Maransky module was mothballed and decline development at BS4 has been suspended. At Eland, Kokama decline development has been scheduled on a just-in-time basis with long-dated surface infrastructure also delayed. These measures do not materially compromise timelines. However, there is a compromise on future costs of these projects as, of course, escalation kicks in against the delayed expenditure. We will continue to apply prudent cost management at all of the operations with one eye on the market and will adjust our response accordingly. The provision of power remains critical and in spite of the current reduction in load shedding by ESCOM, we remain of our view that this continues to present a high risk to the mining industry and that ESCOM tariff, right, tariff hikes will remain significantly above CPI. At Zona Enda, the combination of our on-site diesel generator fleet together with renewable energy initiatives remains critical to both energy security and managing the cost of power. This is a picture of the newly commissioned uh, generators at Zona Enda. You can see all six sets. Each of them is 4.6 megawatts. We've completed similar upgrades at Boisendal and Eland, and we're now able to operate uninterrupted under level four curtailment conditions across the group. This is equivalent to domestic level load shedding six. In addition, we've entered into a power purchase agreement with an independent power producer for an 80 megawatt solar farm at Zonda This will improve operational resilience and our cost position. A strong operational performance allowed us to once again post record production and record sales volumes. And despite further weakening in metal prices, we generated revenue of 30.8 billion rand. The environment of higher inflation and weak prices has continued. And in response, we have trimmed the elective capital expenditure in a manner that minimizes the impact on the project milestones. In light of the high degree of uncertainty in the current metals markets, we will continue to be internally focused and we pl place high emphasis on safe production, efficient mining, and at the right cost. Cash conservation and preservation remain particular focus areas. The board has declared a final dividend of 70 cents per share, bringing in the total dividend for the year to one round 70. As we have said uh, many times, uh, mining first, metallurgy second. And we're not doing the metallurgists in here. It's a reflection of risk in our business. Most of the business risk lies underground. We're gradually now shifting the focus of our strategy from mining to processing. And in order to maximize the economic benefit of the mining effort, we are affecting expansions across our primary and downstream processing facilities, improving both throughput, recovery, and yield. This is a picture of one such initiative. It's an extension of the chrome recovery plant at the Boisendal South concentrator in this case, and it has improved overall chrome yields by 7%. Boisendal is expected to produce 770,000 tons of chrome concentrate for FY25. The importance of owning the full value stream of our chrome byproduct has become very apparent over the last few years. If we can now move on to the mining operations and firstly safety. This remains a key focus area for the group and we're pleased to report an overall improved performance for the year gone. The group remained fatality free throughout the year and Boisendal and Zonda Ender recorded 10 and 4 million 
fatality free shifts respectively during July. They're wonderful achievements. Elan surpassed 2 million fatality free shifts in April. But sadly, this month, August, one of our contractor employees passed away at Eland. It was a fall of ground incident whilst Mr. Sotoli was busy applying shockcrete. The board extends condolences to Mr. Sotoli's family and friends, and, our, and we, are, we are very sad, actually, to lose our colleague in what was a preventable accident. We remain vigilant and engaged on all matters related to the health and safety of our employees as a board. Looking at some of the operational metrics at group level, tons milled increased by 5.8%, whilst mined metal production grew by 10.3%, and total refined metal increased by 5.3%. The planned rebuild of our number two furnace has been successful with first slag tapped on the 23rd of August and we're currently running at 12 megawatts this morning. The rebuild was timed in order to, as far as possible, minimize the sales impact on both the 2024 and the 2025 financial years. And we finished the year with elevated concentrate stocks as a result which I'll touch on later. Despite generally higher mining inflation and the ramp up at the Eland, we've managed to limit the increase in cash costs before E ounce to 4.3%, which is a very creditable performance. However, our cash margin decreased to 15.7%, reflecting the significantly lower metal prices. Chrome production improved by 24% with higher UG2 tonnages treated and improving chrome yields at all operations. Now I'll move on to discuss the mines individually and firstly is on the end up. Bedding down Marensky mining in the western extension as well as the migration of UG2 mining to the east led to a marginal reduction in mill tonnage, but this was more than offset by grade, grade improvements, particularly on the UG2. This led to a slight improved production of 328,000 4 e ounces, and this, together with good cost control, limited the increase in unit costs to a creditable 5%. The completion of number three shaft towards the end of 2025 will lead to further productivity gains in the future. A decline in metal prices, however, led to a lower cash margin of 17.2%. Capital expenditure at Zondenda was limited to 2.3 billion rand and applied to work on number three shaft, upgrades to the base metal refinery, the recently commissioned furnace slag plant, a PGM scavenger plant, and the rebuild of number two furnace at year end. Here's, in fact, a picture of the, uh, of the furnace showing detail of the copper cooling elements. Always good to see. Uh, this is post-rebuild, of course. The furnace has now been brought back into production successfully. Moving on to Boisendal. We have now exceeded steady-state volumes, and all operating sections of the mine are contributing. In line with expectations, mill tonnage grew by 7.5%, whilst grades improved by 6.5%. Split reef persists, of course, at an average of 8%, and this has been managed. In light of current market conditions, mining has been suspended at the South Marensky module, and reserves will be mined from the North Marensky module for the time being. Mine tonnages are currently exceeding milling capacity, and this led to an accumulation of run of mine ore of 460,000 tons, quite a sizable stockpile. Work continues on expanding plant capacity and implementation of dry stacking at the tailings dam. We are also awaiting permitting from government for the expansion of the south tailings dam, and this is the remaining bottleneck for an increase to the milling rate. Overall, metal production at Boisendal improved by 13%, 
limiting the unit cost increase to a creditable 4.4%. Boisendal posted an operating profit of 4.6 billion rand at a cash margin of 41%, despite the material decline in metal prices. Capital expenditure at Boisendal was 1.3 billion rand, pretty much all sustaining capex as the expansion is pretty much complete. On time, on budget, and all in all, a very successful mining project. Incidentally, it's taken 12 years and a lot of determination to build this mine. And I'd like to thank uh, the Boisendal team and the project support that have done a sterling job over a number of years now. Anybody thinks you're going to build a mine in five years, I wish you luck. <laughs> At Elan, the mining ramp up has begun in earnest. We now have 26 production teams on the face which will eventually grow to 64 teams at steady state. Underground tonnage has increased on, on schedule and concentrated recoveries improved significantly as the run of mine hit the mill. We produce 69,000 ounces in concentrate together with a further 49,000 ounces from third parties. Unit cash costs improved to 34,600 rand per 40 ounce driven by the volume increase. Yilan will become a significant chrome producer in the coming years, with chrome yields reaching 23% at year end. And we forecast 200,000 tons of saleable chrome from this operation in 2025. In order to preserve cash, we did temporarily stop decline development, which deferred capital. Decline development has now been recommenced in July. This is a picture of the new enlarged nickel sulfate, sulfate crystallizer. It's not often we look at the refinery. This is in the base metal removal plant, and it's scheduled for commissioning in September. This is the final part of aligning the capacity of the process streams in the metallurgical complex at Zonderenda. We built significant stock as our production base has grown, and at year end, this included over 600,000 tons of run of mine in front of the various mills, 800,000 tons of furnace slag, and 25,000 tons of concentrate ahead of number two furnace, post shutdown, of course. This year has seen a considerable investment in the processing area, and we're nearly there with the metallurgical upgrades. Once complete, this will allow us to convert the full mining effort into cash with the final push to 1 million ounce sales expected in the coming year. The focus of our growth strategy is developing, moving from building and diversifying our mining assets to expanding and optimizing our processing capacity. Our growth has necessitated an increase in the inventory we carry. This inventory is unencumbered and we own its full value. Some of it sits within our furnaces, and this will remain, but we are enacting plans to work through other stocks, one of which is our slag stockpile, and we recently commissioned our new slag plant. This is a picture of the milling section of that plant, with a slag stockpile in the background. We forecast to work through the 800,000 tons of slag over the next four years, adding approximately 15,000 ounces per year. Looking at the key financial features for the year under review. Under the prevailing PGN market conditions and without a clear signal for improvement, we remain inwardly focused, placing even more emphasis on operational efficiencies productivity, and cost control. The scale, flexibility, and resilience afforded by our growth strategy have gone a long way towards allowing us to benefit from that focus. In spite of soft metal prices, our growth in metal production and sales volumes led to sales revenue of 30.8 billion rand and our focus on cost allowed us to post an operating profit, albeit 
significantly reduced from 2023. EBITDA was similarly affected, but despite this, the sale of our investments in RB Platt and M Platts allowed us to reduce net debt to 3.1 billion rands, whilst continuing to invest in organic growth. Basic earnings per share and headline earnings per share for the year amounted to 4 Rand 61 and 4 Rand 45 respectively. The requirements for headline earnings do not allow the add back of the loss on sale of Impala shares. This negatively impacted headline earnings by just more than 2 Rand per share. However, in order to maximize the return of value to shareholders, we eliminated this loss in our calculation for dividends. Looking now at revenue. Revenue for the year was 30.8 billion rand. This is an 8.7 billion rand or a 22.2% decrease on the previous year, which was wholly the result of a material reduction in the average US 4E basket price and is despite a 7.3% increase in sales volumes in line with our previous guidance, as well as a 5.2% weakening of the rand against the US dollar. We caution that continuing weakness in metal prices is placing significant pressure on revenue and therefore profitability. In addition, it is also important to note that sales for the coming year will be lopsided due to the furnace rebuilt, conservatively estimated at around a 40-60 split. The benefit of the full mine to market value chain for Chrome is clear. We produced and sold around 1.3 million tons of Chrome for the year, and this contributed 12.5% or 3.8 billion rand to our revenue.